2008 Nissan Altima two-door coupe this is the master switch it will not roll the passenger window down that is our complaint scan tool is absolutely no help this system communicates on a k-line serial data so no support from the scan tool done with that what do you do hmm I have the answer special guest today I got Chloe the Diag dog she's very nosy and wanted to know what I was doing so uh, there she is we have a 2008 Nissan Altima it was a two-door coupe the passenger side window would not go up and down with the master switch um, just uh, kind of a simple little diag. It had been easy to throw a switch at it, and, and the shotgun, part shotgun, would have hit uh, dead on. But uh, a new switch was 350 bucks. A used switch was 200 bucks, and um, I wanted some footage to uh, make a video of decoding a K line. The scan tool, as I showed in the little video was uh, no help there is no data pids available now this is the factory scan tool there's no data pids available to show any input or output from the master switch concerning the windows uh, there are data pids for various other uh, inputs to the bcm but not the windows so as usual with my videos i'm going to show you some pico stuff uh, I'm going to show you a quick setup of how to decode the signal to uh, get some information from it. And uh, we'll go over a little wiring diagram. And uh, got the Christmas theme going on. So I uh, hope to get this video up uh, soon and maybe one more before the holidays. So you guys enjoy and uh, thanks for watching. So here's the wiring diagram of the car we're working on. A um, couple of things real quick. Uh, for those that pay really close attention, up here you'll see the word, you'll see it, the information I have is for 2011. Um, the car is an 08. I'm simply using an 011 uh, service information because the layout is easier for me to display than the 08. There were some changes made to the service information. As far as how it works and the wiring, it's the same. Um, you always want to make sure your work, the system that you're working on is what your, your wiring is for. You can see here a coupe with left and right power window anti-pinch. Uh, if you were just to look at the diagram for just the left side anti-pinch, you would find that the master switch is hardwired to the sub switch or the passenger switch. But um, you would figure it out really quick that you had the wrong diagram. So, like I said, this thing is a K-line diagnostics. Uh, pretty cool stuff. It's all about serial data and serial decoding, which uh, I'll show you with the Pico captures coming up. So, real quick, here's the BCM. This is the passenger side switch. Uh, the pop-ups kill me. This is the passenger side motor. Uh, it has an encoder in it. Basically, is a fancy way of saying it has probably a Hall effects that let it lets the CPU know where the window is in travel. This is the master switch. Um, there again, an encoder, motor up and down. Any inputs that you use here, as far as the windows buttons, are going to travel through the K line. The BCM is going to take a look at it, and then this CPU is going to act accordingly. Uh, this is a two-door coupe, so really you only have the driver's side window up and down and the passenger side window up and down. And, of course, your power window lock. Um, that you can play uh, cruel jokes on people and lock their windows down if you were to pass a little gas in the car. Uh, other inputs. These are your door lock assembly left hand. We're not really focused on any of that. 
But like we were showing you in the video, or I showed you in the video, the, the BCM, you have no data PIDs for the windows. Uh, it's kind of strange, but there are none there. Uh, you can look at the door open and close switches. Um, I think you can see the door lock and unlock stuff, but nothing with the windows. So on the Pico captures, what you're going to see um, is I am back probed at 12 and the exact same wire at 16. I want to make sure if this is talking that it's getting here. I found that if I unplug the master and back probe just the harness, it's 12 volts or system voltage. There is no activity on the line, either here or here. So I'm guessing 40 is putting out the signal and then 12 is directing traffic, shall we say. Um, you can see over here, powers and grounds were checked. That's pretty, pretty standard stuff. Uh, three, which would be 10, that's your retained power. So if you, I don't know, you get 45 seconds after you turn the car off. And I believe one is our battery power. And then down here, the star of the show is number 40, which is number 12. And it is the power window K line. So we're going to get into the Pico captures next. And I'm going to show you how to kind of set it up a little bit, do some decoding, and then um, a little video of it being fixed. So, so this is the capture here. Hang in there. Of uh, the K line at both switches. Um, just verifying that everything that comes out of the master is getting to the passenger uh, switch. And it and it was. I don't have I don't have a wiring issue. So everything here, I'll just zoom in real quick, is a mirror image of each other. Um, so that just proves that the wiring is intact. Uh, like I said, it is serial data. Uh, one key thing to remember is this is a 12 volt signal that is dropped down. So that's going to be key to remember when we set up the decoding. So what I'm going to do just for ease of screen space is I'm going to turn off channel B because it's exactly the same as channel A. When this capture was taken, the key was on and immediately it starts transmitting during this whole capture i was moving the passenger sides the master switch but the passenger window portion of it up and down up and down up and down the whole capture this whole time i am moving the switch and we'll see with the decoding um, what happened so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out the speed of this signal. That's going to uh, help us with our setup. So I like to go in here and just kind of pick on something. I like to pick on the smallest bit. I think it's a bit or is it a byte? I'm going to say bit. So it drops down there and it goes up. So let's pick on this one right here. And we're just going to take a little measurement. And Let's go to the nice crisp corner. We're at 9.2 kilohertz, but I want you to pay attention to the time. 108.4 microseconds. 108. So let's go up here to tools. Serial decoding. And we want to add a decoder here you have a full list um, I barely even know less than half of these as far as automotive industry uh, can can FD we mess with flex ray Lynn Yort. Um, I can tell you I tried to make this signal decode with a Lin, and it with picking Lin and that speed down there that we talked about, it wouldn't decode it. Uh, different protocol. We're going to go with the one wire. That's what I've found in the past that works best with K line. So I'm going to pick one wire. We're going to use data A. 
you have to invert because remember it's a 12 volt dropping to zero so if you don't invert it it won't decode it Uh, the threshold, basically, once it crosses to 5.2, this is kind of computer-generated. It populates. I usually leave this stuff alone. Um, now, here's our sample time. And we need to go to Custom. And if you arrow up, it goes from 108 to one, or 100 to 120. I can tell you it works fine with 120. Uh, but what we'll do, being as we took the time to measure it, Let's go ahead and put it at 108. Then I'm going to hit OK. And that's the one we want to decode. And let's hit OK. See what happens. All right, there's our decoding. And here's our chart down here. And um, like I said, during this entire capture, I was moving the switch up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, I'm not an expert on each and every portion of this decoding. I know enough to be dangerous. So this is what I'm looking for in this particular capture. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And one thing I've noticed is the command code. Now one would think that if you're moving that switch up and down, and this switch is any good, the command code would change. So I'm just going to start at the beginning, or the first one I can find. Command code 92, data 44. Let's just zoom out in the middle here. Command code 92, 44. It's going to sound like a broken record. 92, 44. You kind of get the picture that the switch is not doing anything. There it is, 92, 44. Because I know I couldn't record this on the phone and show you a video of what I was actually doing, but I was moving it a lot. And you see no change. So what I'm thinking is this is just a standard signal as if the switch was in like a neutral position. So you have up, auto up. Then you, then you let go of it, it's like a neutral position, and then you have a detent for down, and then auto down. So I'm expecting several different command changes as I'm moving the switch. Well, there is none. Every now and then you get a little flicker here or there, but nothing crazy. Um, so at this point, I verified powers grounds. I verified communication is there at both switches. I have no movement. So at this point, I, I called the switch. Um, we got another switch put in it. And uh, I was so glad of that because I could actually test my, uh, my theory. And uh, let's look at the next capture. The next capture I've already set up um, the exact same way. And it's kind of neat because you can kind of see, now I just have the key on, but if you look down through, let me zoom in a little bit. I hope you guys can see this. But if you look right in here, I don't know if I zoom in tighter if it would help or hurt. But you see right there, that's when the window started moving. The passenger window is moving with the new switch. Same exact hookup. But that's when the, move, the movement happened, and you'll be able to, and I'll zoom in in a minute, you'll be able to see the data change to tell it. Now, I can't remember if I pushed down here or up here. Um, that's my bad on that. But you, uh, you look through here, you see the voltage drop right there. That's the window motor moving. It's kind of a tattletale to let me know where uh, where I'm at in time here and you could kind of maybe see a little bit of movement up and down in here this is me just literally click 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 I'm uh I already knew at this point the window was fixed but I'm trying to get get a pretty cool capture you can see here that the window started moving one way and started moving another way 
or actually it stopped moving right there so the voltage went up and then it started moving again you can see the little bit of inrush and current um, that's always neat so I'm going to zoom in right here we've already determined that the window did something so it was uh, moving in here and then got ready to stop there's our command 92 and 44 so that must have been the neutral position oops and then there's command 09 with data 25 so that proves right there you know that this switch is obviously working the windows going up and down but my data's changing and if I just kind of hover over that it's packet 461 did you catch that real quick packet 461 and what I've done down here is I've changed it to binary and I'll show you how to do that and then uh, the capture right before it was packet 459 so oh, and to change that you would go here so the graph is up here at the top I use hex because it has colors on it and the table I'm using binary because that is what computers talk ones and zeros so the two I have highlighted, which was 459 and 461, uh, lost them. Let me find them again. And here's the packet data over here is where I'm getting this at. So let me zip down here to 459. Nope, it's 441. For some reason I've lost my down arrow. There he is. All right, there's 459. And it sent 01001001. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. And in 461 was 1001. Zero, zero, one. So you can kind of clearly see the data changed. And the window responded accordingly shortly thereafter. But um, anyway, a little quick little diagnosis with some uh, k-line decoding with the picoscope I find this stuff extremely interesting um, like I said uh, the just throwing a switch at this would have fixed the car because um, that's what fixed the car but $350 gamble um, and a chance to learn something uh, which I did and hope you are um, is is uh, priceless after master window switch replacement all fixed